everybody and welcome back to another episode in our TNA series. We are a couple of days removed from the TNA One Night Only Knockouts Knockdown event in which we had our Knockouts champion Gail Kim retain the championship as well as uh, crowning new TNA Knockouts Tag Team Champions in the big upset of Evie and Nixie Newell, Team Kick getting the championships. But all that out of the way, we officially are on the road now to final resolution, which takes place in two weeks' time. We have this episode of Impact, we have the next week's episode of Impact, and then we're at final resolution. And uh, the card is already starting to be built as it is, but the card is going to continue to get built as the night and next week goes on. Nevertheless, we are going to dive into the action here on this episode of Impact in front of 7,601 people in the Sullivan Arena in Alaska. We're actually running Alaska this week, apparently. But we open up Impact with Bobby Roode and Dixie Carter backstage in Eric Bischoff's office, confronting him with Dixie Carter commanding, demanding... The same opportunity that Bischoff was heard offering at James Storm a couple of weeks ago on Nitro, on, uh, on Nitro, on Impact. I apologize. I just got done watching a bunch of Nitro stuff, so it's in my head now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so Dixie Carter is demanding that same opportunity for Bobby Roode. Bischoff brings up the fact that there wouldn't, there shouldn't be any opportunity for Bobby Roode because he lost that Wall Street fight at Turning Point to James Storm. And Dixie Carter threatens to fire Eric Bischoff. Well, Eric says, well, you can't fire me. I, uh, I've i been appointed by the board of directors. Therefore, it is up to them to uh, result in my firing here in the company as well. And so Carter says, well, then fine. I mean, I own the company and I own the board of directors, but fine. If I have to go that route, then I will do what it takes to get you fired. Bischoff decides that it's not worth the hassle of going through that whole thing and says, fine. Then at final resolution, you can compete for the opportunity that James Storm was going to get, as it is going to be Bobby Roode versus James Storm, with the winner getting a shot at the TNA World's Heavyweight Championship at Genesis. But it's not going to be just any random match. It's not going to be just a regular singles match. It's going to be a ladder match. So the winner of Bobby Roode and James Storm at final resolution gets the shot at the TNA World's Heavyweight Championship at Genesis. We will have to see who gets that opportunity. And the commentators kind of hype this up as well as hyping up tonight's show, including seeing James Storm in action later tonight, as well as the main event uh, being announced of Austin Aries going one-on-one -on -one with Ethan Carter the third, the main event for Impact this week. We move on after that segment to a matchup featuring Black Friday Management defeating the Von Erichs in 447 when Homicide pins Marshall Von Erich with a Gringo Killer. I keep forgetting to turn Shelly Martinez heel. My bad. Um, but Black Friday Management in a bit of a squash match, honestly. The Monarchs essentially just get squashed. 51 rating for the match. 68 from Homicide. 64 from Loki. 38 from Ross Von Erich. And 33 from Marshall Von Erich. As usual, the match is not as important as what happens after the match. Because after the match, the American Wolves run down and jump their opponents at final resolution for the, ta the TNA World Tag Team Championships. Christopher Daniels and Samoa Joe, representing Black Friday Management, come running down to try to um, put things in favor of Black Friday Management, but the Wolves are able to escape before worrying about the numbers game, and they pose with their tag team titles as Black Friday Management look on. 71 rating for that segment. So the Wolves able to get a little bit of uh, revenge for the recent attacks on them, and also able to get a little bit of momentum on their side by... Uh, leaving Homicide and Loki laid out for even if it was only for a few moments there. After that, we get a tag team matchup featuring the beautiful people defeating Team Smile. Um, 
still kind of need to come up with a better name for them. But nevertheless, the beautiful people defeat Team Smile. In 642, when Velvet Sky pinned Serena D with an in your face, 51 rating for the matchup. Um, essentially, this was twofold. One, it was to get uh, the knockouts tag team division, um, kind of get another match featured in that division. And two, this was to kind of help uh, the beautiful people gain a little bit of momentum after they uh, lost the tag team title match at final re- or at uh, knockouts knockdown. So it was kind of a way to to get them back on the winning uh, side of things and get some momentum for them. Uh, but nevertheless, and it was actually a pretty good, uh, pretty good even matchup here between both teams. Um, Brittany and Serena Deeb having low forties ratings. Uh, Brooke Tessmacher probably with her best rating of the save, and Velvet Sky a little bit lower than normal, but still pretty good rating there. So good stuff there. After this matchup, we go backstage and we have an interview with April Mendez, who talks about defeating Rosemary uh, this past Saturday night, Sunday night. I don't remember if I did it as pay- the pay per views of Saturday or Sunday. Clearly, I'm on the ball with things. But she talks about defeating Rosemary. However, she does talk about suffering and injury in that matchup that she didn't really know the extent of until she uh, worked a house show recently and had it really become a, an issue. Um, she's not going to be out for that long, though. She's only going to be out for 18 days or so, so she will be missing final resolution, um, but she should be back on the impact after that. Nevertheless, she's not going to let it be cause a setback as defeating Rosemary. She feels like she's really getting that opportunity to come knocking in t- on the door of uh, the next the next room, so to speak, um, you know, following the, the path of uh, to the knockouts championship. This is, she's been able to knock on the door to the next section. You know, this is, she's getting to that point where she can start challenging, um, former knockouts champions, former, you know, ones that some of the, the knockouts that are right there up upon the cusp of, uh, getting into the title picture kind of thing. So she feels like she's kind of getting there and, uh, she's not going to let this injury hold her back. After that, we have a surprisingly seven or 70 rated matchup. As in about the head good here in decent wrestling, Jeff Hardy defeated Brian Kendrick in 903 by pinfall with a swanton bomb. Uh, 66 rating from Jeff Hardy, 56 from Brian Kendrick. Not really any story behind this match. It was simply just, here's a match. Here's a match between these two men, and they went out and they had a really good matchup. Um, Both men not really having a whole lot to do right now. Uh, Jeff Hardy hasn't really been doing a whole lot. He he did lose to Chris Saban in the Saban... uh, attempt to become a Mr. TNA. Um, he did lose that to Chris Saban, however, but otherwise he hasn't really been doing much since his issue with Abyss is done or has been done. Uh, Brian Kendrick, of course, since kind of leaving the X division championship picture, he has been kind of just floating out there. So both men getting a, an opportunity to wrestle here on impact in a nine minute matchup and looking pretty good upon. So doing so after that, we get a we go to a commercial break. We come back and find out that the X Division Championship is on the line, as DJZ is defending against Sheldon Benjamin. Um, Sheldon Benjamin, of course, having some issues recently with uh, the fact that he lost to Paul London. Paul London was the number one contender for the knockout for the uh, X Division Championship. That is, and he took some offense to that um, on Explosion this past Saturday before Knockouts Knockdown. He attacked DJZ and DJZ. Uh, approached Eric Bischoff and said that he wanted to defend the title against Sheldon Benjamin and was okay with the idea that if Sheldon won, that he would go on to defend the title against Paul London at final resolution. However, in 1425, DJZ is able to get the victory with a ZDT and it makes defense number five of the X Division Championship. 77 rating for the match. Holy cow. These two just killed it. (laughs) 67 from both individuals. Gained heat for the storyline. Really, really hot matchup there. I cannot complain at all. But DJZ retaining the X Division Championship and turning his attention now to Final Resolution and Paul London waiting for that title opportunity. Of course, Paul London was at ringside for this matchup um, watching and uh, kind of scouting DJZ. Or, well, technically he was scouting whoever was going to be the winner of this. And uh, kind of is looking forward to the matchup. After that, 
Backstage, we have a Angelina Love interview with Jeremy Borash, where she expresses disappointment for the loss against Mickey James. But she promises that she's going to do what it takes to get another shot at the Knockouts Championship, that she will be getting herself back into that title picture sooner rather than later. However, before she could continue talking, she suddenly gets sprayed in the face by some mist. And as the camera pans over, it shows that it came from the the mouth of Rosemary. Rosemary's standing there cackling. Not cackling. That's not the right word. But she's kind of laughing in a creeping way. Creepingly way. As Angelina Love goes down holding her face. And Jeremy Borash calls out for help. So it looks like Rosemary has deemed her next target to be Angelina Love, apparently. Not sure what's going on there, but uh, we'll have to see if there's any sort of reasoning behind this or anything like that. After this, we get James Storm in action as he takes on one half of the Killer Lee squad, Harry Smith. In an eight-minute matchup, James Storm gets the victory by pinfall with an eye of the Storm. 72 rating for the matchup, 68 from James Storm, 51 from Harry Smith. Really good matchup featuring these two. James Storm getting the victory, though. But, despite the match being good, as usual, it's more important what happens after the match than during the matchup. Because after the match, Bobby Roode runs in and attacks James Storm, beating him down to the canvas and standing tall ahead of the announced ladder match in 10 days' time. Lost some heat for the storyline. Eh, it's... That's what it is. I know that it's going to uh, still be pretty, pretty a pretty hot storyline when it comes to the pay-per-view matchup. After that, we have another kind of somewhat random matchup. This gets a 66 rating as D'Angelo De Niro defeats Kenny King in 732 by pinfall with the DDE. Uh, Kenny King on the losing end once again. Not uh, continuing to have loss after loss at this point. Um Feels like it might be building to something. We're not sure. But he does take a loss here to D'Angelo De Niro in a 66-rated matchup. 65 from D'Angelo De Niro, 44 from Kenny King. Uh, Kenny King has a gimmick that's getting stale. I believe I found that out on the last episode and still did not change it. Good job, Daredevil. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, De Niro with a, with a uh, pretty successful victory here. Um... Yeah, both, you know, Kenny King. This was, this match was more just telling, telling the story that Kenny King once again could not get the job done against somebody. And uh, we'll have to see what that ends up leading to in the future. After that, we go backstage where Mickey James has an interview that gets a 72 rating. Holy freaking cow. Um, that's I think that's one of the highest rated uh, knockout segments we've had, honestly. But Mickey James has an interview with Jeremy Borash where she talks about now getting that opportunity to reclaim her Knockouts Championship at Final Resolution. Of course, her defeating Angelina Love made it official that at Final Resolution it will be Gail Kim versus Mickey James in a rematch from Bound for Glory for the Knockouts Championship. So that's kind of officially announced for the show. I mean, it was officially announced at the paper at uh, Knockouts Knockdown, but it gets further uh, announced here. And then she promises to make sure Gail Kim knows who truly is the queen of the knockout. So strong, strong promo here as she uh, has no problem trying to put Gail Kim in her place. Then we get a matchup featuring ODB defeating Taryn Terrell in 805 by pinfall with a BAM! 55 rating for the matchup. 60 from ODB, 30 from Taryn Terrell. Madison Rain was at the commentary table for this matchup, um, but did not get involved in the during the matchup at all over uh, kind of talking about how she's really disappointed that ODB was the one who cost her the Knockouts Championship, but that she will make her pay when the opportunity arises. However, for, for now, she waits and uh, does the smart thing. She wait, She doesn't do the typical thing that you see in, in the wrestling game over where it's just constant attacks back and forth. She waits. She plays things the smart way. So kind of putting out a little bit different of a strategy than normal, but ODB getting a victory here and uh, gaining a little bit more momentum after her recent uh, losses she's been suffering. After that... I am very surprised that they all three struggled to improvise. That is really weird. 
We get Chris Saban coming out to the ring, talking about what happened to him last week, talking about the fact that er- that er- AJ Styles should be suspended for the attack on him, despite the fact that Chris Saban attacked him two weeks ago on Impact. Um, however, before Saban can say much, AJ Styles comes out to interrupt and announces that Chris Saban will be continuing this gauntlet of sorts, but it won't be happening tonight. It won't be happening next week on night on impact. It will be happening at final resolution will be the next matchup. And he's going to go up against a man who also has made quite a name for himself here in TNA, but he's not complete. He's not, uh, although he, um, is somebody who, you know, has developed a name for himself here in TNA. He's somebody who was known, across the wrestling business before getting here. And that's when Bully Ray comes out from the back, standing alongside AJ Styles. Bully Ray says that although he's had times in the past where he hasn't, where he's been going to blows with AJ Styles, he does respect the guy, but he doesn't respect a little punk like Chris Sabin. Some back and forth happens um, between Sabin and Styles and Bully Ray, and it ends up leading to a tag team match challenge which does get end up getting accepted for next week's Go Home episode of Impacts, where it's going to be the Motor City Machine Guns taking on AJ Styles and Bully Ray, with the idea being that, you know, of course, the guns are, you know, Alex Shelley might not be seen on AJ Styles and Bully Ray's level, but the guns have more tag team experience than Styles and Bully Ray do together, so, you know, maybe they're going to struggle to coexist. We're not sure, but that's the... uh that's going to be the go-home for Final Resolution. We're going to see AJ Styles and Bully Ray taking on the Motor City Machine Guns in what should be a really great matchup there. After that, we get our main event of the evening, which only gets a 75 uh, due to a lack of psychology. I kind of expected that to happen. That's why the match didn't go that long. Um, but even then, even with the match not going that long, it still had the lack of psychology. Both men, not really a lot of uh, psychology there, but nevertheless, Austin Aries gets a big victory in the main event, defeating EC3 and A47 by submission with the last chancery after Kurt Angle provided a distraction. Um, Rockstar Spoto was at ringside and tried to get involved in the matchup, um, tried to provide a distraction, but Kurt Angle came down and uh, kind of chased off Spoto a little bit, and that uh, caused enough of a distraction from EC3 for Austin Aries to lay him out with a brain buster and then lock in the last chancery for the victory. 75 rating, 69 for both men, which is really good ratings, honestly, for EC3 there. Um, Aries seemed off his game, though, so that's also part of the reason why he kind of performed a little bit lower. But good stuff for sure. Uh, decent main event there. 75 rating, and uh, EC3 continue to have his struggles with Kurt Angle. At some point in time, they're going to end up having their one-on-one matchup, but it hasn't uh, been announced yet. We'll have to see when that ends up happening. And then we move on to our final rated segment of the night, which gets a 91 rating. Holy freaking cow. (laughs) I was not expecting that as we get our contract signing for final resolution between Magnus and Johnny Impact uh, with Eric Bischoff moderating it. Um, there are some back and forth comments made between both men. Magnus saying that as the king of TNA, that he needs that TNA World's Heavyweight Championship back around his waist. He held that championship for most of 2014 and was a goddamn legendary champion as the champion. That Johnny Impact, all he's bringing to it is just all the cheers from the female uh, fans in attendance and just... Um, all these flashy moves and everything, but Magnus is truly a wrestling man, uh, working man's wrestler and truly the king of professional wrestling. Johnny Impact says that he may be, you know, getting that female attention. He may be kind of the movie star, so to speak, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't uh, respect the TNA World's Heavyweight Championship and that he doesn't, uh, that he doesn't uh, plan on being one of the greatest champions in TNA history. Both men kind of coming face-to-face with each other, but not actually resulting in any sort of physical contact, which is surprising for a contract signing in professional wrestling. And a stare-down between the two ends the segment and ends impact here tonight. 91 rating for that. Really good stuff there. We end the show, which gets a... 
78 rating. I will take it. Increased popularity in 12 regions. Some weight or some uh, popularity restrictions elsewhere. Really good uh, show rating, though, honestly. I will take a 78. Um, it may not be our best show we've had, but it is certainly a really good one for sure. And, uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing what um, next week's impact goes. And then, obviously, the match at final or the uh, pay per view final resolution which should be a really good one as well. Of course, quick rundown of the card for final resolution. As I said, TNA Knockouts Championship at the line, Gail Kim defending against Madison Rain. We have the ladder match, Bobby Roode versus James Storm, with the winner getting a shot at the TNA World Heavyweight Championship at Genesis. We have the Feast or Fired matchup happening at Final Resolution, which we won't know any of the participants until the night of. We excuse me. We also have the TNA World Tag Team titles on the line as the American Wolves defend against Black Friday's management's Homicide and Loki. And of course, the big prize, the, the TNA World's Heavyweight Championship on the line, Johnny Impact defending against Magnus. And I forgot one match before I announced that, that um, it is also going to be the TNA X Division Championship on the line, Paul London challenging DJZ for the championship. Now, I just, I was going to show you, or I was going to get ready to end this episode, but then the news popped up, and oh my god, the news popped up, and oh my god, the news popped up. Um, in what can only be described as a very shocking and surprising thing in the wrestling world, something that you would probably never see in real life, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling just announced that they are partnering with All Japan Pro Wrestling. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, for those who are unfamiliar... That would be essentially like WWE and AEW deciding to suddenly partner up here in 2022. Um, that doesn't happen. <laughs> what cursed environment have I introduced with this series that All Japan and New Japan are partnering up to apparently just take over the wrestling world? Um, that's a very scary sight, honestly. Uh, and not only that, but New Japan is using All Japan to build up the, their talent in a as a, more of a developmental company, which is very surprising. Um, <laughs> as you see by the company wars, uh, New Japan is fourth, and All Japan, eh, All Japan is actually kind of lower at this point. All Japan is uh, where is All Japan? Did I miss it? I must have missed it there. Oh, they're thirteenth. So yeah, that's uh that's kind of a big deal. Um yeah, that's kind of a big I mean I get that all Japan's kind of slipped a little bit, um, especially over the last few years or so. They're not quite as popular, you know, since New Japan kind of really started stealing the the thunder, so to speak, in Japan. But that's still a big deal. That's still like the two companies who have been around for quite some time suddenly deciding to work together. Um, All Japan, of course, it has been around uh, since 1972, um, has developed, you know, at one time was a lot more popular than they are now, but has definitely, you know, had a crazy amount of, uh, of history with it. And of course, New Japan being around, uh, if I want to click on it, since 1972 as well. So both companies formed the same year and really went at it for so long with each other. That it is very surprising that uh, that that is a thing. Uh, it could be completely honest. And the crazy, the cool, kind of weird, crazy part of this too. Um, and I will have to do this really quick, just so you guys don't get spoiled to something or to a few things. Uh, the crazy part of all this. Wait, what happened to our? Okay, well, never mind. We had a deal with with New Japan at one point. Apparently, we don't anymore. <laughs> Never mind. Forget what I was about to say. But no, that is a uh, that is pretty surprising news. Um, 
the fact that New Japan and All Japan are working together like that is pretty crazy. Pretty crazy indeed. Um, talk about a fi- forbidden door being kicked open. Here in 2014, a forbidden door is being kicked open. Ratings for the night. Obviously, we get the big one. We get the big victory there. Destroying everybody else. Um, kind of to be expected. Is what it is. Um, I did want to look at... I can do it while I'm here. Because I wanted to look really quick at WWE and see, let's see, show history. So SmackDown, hmm, SmackDown gets, this this last SmackDown got 2.1 million viewers and Raw got 4 point, so we're definitely not going up against Raw anytime soon. 4 million viewers would, would hurt us being up against them in the same night. But SmackDown... 1.4 1.4 TV rating and 2,100 viewers overall because of the WWE Network. So that wouldn't be a bad idea to go up against them in the near future um, when it comes to wanting to go head-to-head with a uh, show for WWE, a WWE show. Um, that's not a bad idea, honestly. Um, that could be definitely worth it to be going up against them because obviously we would just throw the WWE network numbers out the window. Um, you know, they had a 1.4 million for this show and we went and had 1.492. So we actually did, we actually had more viewers for impact this week than they had for SmackDown. So, well, we'll have for SmackDown or whatever that there's an episode obviously happening the next day in the game, but so that's not a that's not a bad idea. It wouldn't be a bad idea, but it would involve moving Impact to Friday nights, which would be kind of weird in game. But you never know. Maybe in the near, you know, maybe give it another six months to a year. Maybe we, uh, maybe we decide to come after WWE and decide to run the same night as SmackDown. We'll have to see. Nevertheless, thank you for watching. Definitely appreciate it. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying the series still, and uh, hopefully, you guys continue to enjoy it. And we will catch you guys next time.